I know you guys cannot see this, especially even on the video. Um, I'm not going to mix up the OBS because I have everything set exactly the way I want it. But let me tell you, I have OBS to control and I'm looking at my second monitor. I have OBS to control the stream, but then I need the stream manager from Twitch in order to like look at the chat and stuff like that. I don't know how to do both. I don't know how these people do both. There's probably a better way of doing this. I've noticed that somebody said you can use iPod or, excuse me, an iPod, an iPad or a phone uh, to like do your chat and kind of make sure your stream is good to go. I don't know. Uh, I'll check into that. For right now, I'm gonna. I have like really. I need three monitors, but I'm not gonna get three monitors. So today's episode is a, a one-off, not required. Uh, I, but I, I'm gonna post it anyway because I love books. Um, I will. I have truckload of books. Look me up on goodreads.com. That list is actually pretty up to date. Um, uh, the books that I want to read, uh, the books I have read, and the books I am reading, that is pretty much up to speed. So uh, go and find me on Goodreads. You can check out my library there. If you want a picture of my library, I probably will post that somewhere on the grams or whatever. Um, but for this Roman study, I'm going to do it in a one-off. Uh, we are, and if this is the first time you're catching this, we, um, and I say we, it's just me for right now. Um, I'll do an episode every Monday at noon. Uh, I may do a, another dupe episode or just go ahead and go live, uh, on Monday evenings for my American, um, viewers. Uh, but the, 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 the one at noon is specifically for my friends in uh, Africa, specifically in Kenya. So if you're watching this, you're catching this, this is not part of the Romans uh, study, but it is the resources that I use that I want to recommend to you guys. And then you can you know do with that as you will. Uh, so here's my list. And again, the show notes are always at theologic.us. That's uh, theologic.us. Just click on, actually, I can do that with you. Come here, click on Bible study. Um, one of the things that I mentioned before, and I finally, finally figured out, was how to put the put these in chronological order. And I put a little. Uh, if these uh, episodes get recorded, I'll put a little checkbox here uh, just to say, oh, that that's uh, actually we've done that episode, or we've done the that yeah that particular episode. And uh, so you know that is posted. It's you'll find it on YouTube. The links are somewhere on Twitch, somewhere on the blog. Uh, also, I did decide just to pull the audio off and just post that into a podcast. I had bumper audio, music, intro, and outro music. So I thought that would be real easy to just slap those on, convert it, send it up, call it a day. So again, as you can tell, this is not going to be part of the series, but uh, I just want to share some of the resources that I have. And maybe this will be helpful to you. So here we go. Okay, so uh, we're going to do a Bible study. And I have to say this. It goes without say. uh, Get yourself a Bible. Bible. Um, I don't care what version you use. Yeah, do I have recommendations? Sure. Uh, uh, But again, those are my opinions. There's the uh, King James, New King James, there's a uh, ESV, there is the NIV, there is uh, the message, which is, I think it's more of a commentary per se. I don't really think that is a, um, uh, but the, me- it's just like, man, the message is real easy to re- read. Well, guess what? Just read the message, you know, um, what else? You know, I'm probably, uh, CSB, I mentioned the, uh, the NASB, there for English, there's all kinds of uh, great translations out there. Uh, I say, you know, what is the one I recommend? You know what? I'm gonna go practical here. Pick the one you would actually read. So, how about that? Um, I would say um, in my little notes here, many times, many teachers, preachers, and small group leaders, myself included, will cut straight to the chase and engage the commentary instead of engaging the Word of God. Uh, remember the commentaries are not without error. They are just observations of the author. So slow down, 
pray, read the Bible, chew and meditate. This is the way I treat commentaries. I'm about to recommend commentaries and study notes and everything. This is the way I kind of treat them. If I come across a a passage that, man, it's like, man, I don't know what, I've never known what this means. What does it mean? The way I look at commentaries is like, I'm inviting the authors who have given me their opinions, their expertise, their know-how, their knowledge, their studies into that book, into that study, into that doctrine, into that theological concept. And I'm inviting them into my office and I'm inviting them into my study and I'm listening to each of them give their insights. And from that, I can pray, I can like grab hold and and discern from that, you by the Holy Spirit discerning that what is the truth or what do I want to teach from that moment. And um and so if come across something really har- hard, that might be a way that you want to go. So but don't but the Bible I'm going to say, if you have the Bible, you, you you have it all. You don't need anything more than that. I promise you, I promise you, you don't need more than that. Uh, engage with the Word of God. Just stay engaged with the Word of God. You'll be, you'll know the Word of God. I promise you that. Now, all that said, Joe, I still want to study the Bible. You know, I want something. I want some notes. Help me out, brother. Well, I'm going to recommend the ESV study Bible. There are other study Bibles out there that are tremendous. They're wonderful. This is the one that I can say, hey, you know what? I've, I've had this for over 10 years. Love it. Love the notes. I, do, do I agree with all the notes? No, of course not. Um, and I here's the thing. I don't agree with all the notes, but I love the notes. And I have purchased this resource for myself several times over, if not for other people. Uh, but if I had to pick one, I don't know, you can't see my cursor. If I had to pick one resource, one version of the ESV study Bible, I would pick the olive tree version. And here it is. Look at this. This is olive tree. And actually I cannot see what I'm doing. So hold on a second. Uh, I have these uh, versions of the Bible. I have some of my favorites. Uh, here's my complete resource guide, and we're going to get back to this in a second. And I know my ugly mug is in front of like, what are the resources you have? There's just truckloads. Now, this is I like this because it's simple. Uh, I can also the the copy and paste is is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Check this out. So I do this, I copy right, and you're like, okay, what's so big deal about copy and pasting? So let me see if I can do this. Okay, turn off, turn off. Okay, for instance, if I wanted to put that in some notes right here, so I'm working on, uh, working, yeah, 418, and uh, that's just not a supporting text for what, what we're doing. So I write in, it looks like I'm writing in code. I write in what it's a, um, called Markdown. It It's a language, it's not a language. Uh, it's a way of writing called Markdown. So as you can see, this is very simplistic. It just do does what I want to do, right? It just copies and pastes. You think that'd be straightforward. You think that'd be really easy, but there's so many options as far as copy and pasting. Now, if you're watching this and you are a theological nerd, chances are you also have Logos. I have Logos too, but you know what? You're looking at my monitor as we speak. And you're you're seeing like how everything is function and forming. Now look at look at all the oh you can't see these, but let me tell you something. I don't have logos running all the time. In fact, I'll bring it up, but let me be honest with you. I have ton and I have hundreds, if not thousands of dollars invested in logos. I don't use it very often. Because what I want is a simple give me the verse, let me copy. Let me write about it. Let me keep on with the rest of my life. Um, Olive Tree does that really simple. Logos doesn't do that very simple. Uh, I've jacked around, messed around with the copy and paste function, which is powerful, but it's not exactly what I want. And so um, I tend to use Olive Tree 99% of the time. The books are cheaper uh, and it's just a lot more portable, especially if you uh, read the Bible from, and I'll, I'll do it like a session on like with the iPhone 
what you see on the desktop is just exactly what you'll get on the phone. So if you imagine, I'm going on and on about all the tree. If you imagine, check this out. Oh, snap. What if I had Calvin's commentaries in my mobile? I'm carrying around sets of commentaries on my phone. Now, Logos has a mobile app too, but I'm going to tell you, Olive Tree is just it. It's easier to use. It's a lot more simple. Um, I, I don't. I haven't spent as much money into Olive Tree, and I would say I don't have to. Uh, not as much as, um, not nearly as much as Logos. I, I felt like I spent more on Logos, but I use Olive Tree way more. Uh, and again, it, way more, way more. But again, the way I use it is I like looking up passages. I like posting. I like when I put together my writing, I paste it in there and I just keep going. I just keep going. Sometimes I have to use that. And Logos, like, man, if you don't want to, if you haven't bought one book and you need to like, but I'm really love commentaries or whatever, Logos is your, or your thing. Uh, it might not be available on all tree logos is really good about putting their resources into like getting commentaries digitalized they they have staff of people who do that and it's really good so some people swear by logos i swear by all tree also i like physical copies of books so i'm kind of leaning towards that i i'd be hard pressed to spend one more nickel at logos not that they're not terrible or anything uh i just like olive tree better and over i've spent i spent a lot of money at logos but i probably i probably won't spend i wouldn't probably wouldn't have spent much more money for the rest of my life so there you go yeah try them both out uh they're both free to try out but see which one get, gets more traction for you what's more helpful it's just trying and see what is more helpful so in whom onto the show okay so we have i'm gonna switch screens here Okay, personal. Okay. Um, and it's like, what, personal? Your personal library? No, 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 no. What I mean is these are things that I have written personally. And it, it'll be like, well, that's kind of audacious. Or like, oh, you know, awesome, right? But here's the thing. If, if I'm going to, if, if I'm turning around and running a Bible study, anything that I have put together, written on in Romans is going to be helpful it all builds up on one another. Well, uh, I wrote an exposition on Romans 8. I uh, call it Here's Love. Uh, yes. Ooh. Well, that's not good. Uh, let's do this one more time. See, if you check on series, Here's Love, and that's not a 4 or 4. Uh, it's really based on, I, in, the, in, the, in the light of 1 John 4.10, uh, here is love that God loves us. Um, but I, uh, with that theme in mind, I wrote an exposition on Romans 8. Uh, and I did a kind of like, here's some chapters to kind of whet the appetite, if you will. Uh, or yeah, here's some, here's some posts to kind of like get in your mindset. Uh, it really, I was trying to answer the question, in the midst of the world currently where we're at, who is trying to find to us as Christians, what is love? If you do A, B, and C, then that would be mean love to me. Whereas we can't do that to God. God has demonstrated his love for us while we're yet sinners. Christ died for us. Well, Romans 5, 8. Um, but I went to Genesis three fifteen, Deuteronomy 7, or Psalm 103, Matthew 121, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Uh, Ezekiel 36, John 3.16, uh, Galatians 2.20, even before I step into Romans 8, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Before I even step into that, uh, I, I gave you a little a little prelude, if you will, uh, kind of like, what's the, where's the mindset? How am I looking at the entirety of Romans 8 uh, through these scriptures, through this word? Uh, what essentially, what has God done? How did he save his people? How does he demonstrate his love for us? This is it. Now I'm going to cross-examine Romans 8 against that and see what comes up. I really like the, um, I really like this book, to be honest with you. 
uh, and there's an inspiration, I promise you. And I'll show you the inspiration. So, uh, and we're about to get to that in a second. So anyway, back to the uh, resources. Okay, so uh, we have that. Also, I kind of attempted my own hand at a, a commentary, but I got stopped at the end of one, which made me shift gears to a Bible study in Romans. Um, so I'm glad I did because the Bible, writing this Bible study will actually lend itself to writing a, a full blown out commentary. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, uh, but I'm going to keep that up there because I did have to re reference it a couple times. Like, what did I say about that? Oh yeah. Okay. So, all right, here's the bibliography, uh, the list of books, if you will. Uh, I'm going to start with the highest recommendation. You know, I, I talk about Romans 8 written. That's like 50,000 words right there. Written like, what is Romans 8? What is Romans 8 about? Uh, the inspiration for that book came from this book. This is No Condemnation in Christ. This is probably going to be reversed. No Condemnation in Christ Jesus by Octavius Winslow. Um, Octavius Winslow, if you don't know who he is, he was actually a contemporary of... Uh, um, Charles Spurgeon from the 19th century yeah, from England. Uh, Spurgeon thought of him so much that the the inaugural sermon preached from the uh, Metropolitan Tabernacle, the first church when you know Spurgeon uh, put together this church. Grand, I would say it's one of the first mega churches of all time. Uh, he was like, you know what? I'm going to have my friend here, Octavius Renzo, give us the first sermon out, out of the pulpit. So uh, the language, if you're used to 19th century English literature, uh, it's phenomenal. It's a great read. And uh, also, it's only available in paperback. And check this out. This is how much, this is how much I've, I've read this. Yeah. It's it just falling apart. Uh, I've begged Banner Trust. I've begged him to redo a hard copy. I've begged him. I would I would love to have that in a per more permanent copy. I actually have a very very beat up first edition first edition 1853 first edition before there was even edition of this book. I just need to get it rebind. Be, it, it may not make the process, but I'm gonna try I, at least. But safe right now, it's very, very fragile. But I hope, I hope one day to get it redone. Okay. And for some reason, my little pictures are not working. I don't like that at all. But I'll fix it later. Anywho, uh, Romans. Continue on. You know, commentaries. You're like Joe. I need commentaries. What are your recos? Here we go. We're gonna keep on recommending. Uh, if I had, it's like, Joe, what is the number one? What is the one you would recommend? Some people would say this other second one you see down here. I'm going to go this way. I think this is more, way more accessible, way more readable. It is R.C. Sproul's, uh, Romans, uh, his St. Andrew's Expositional, can you say that word? Commentary. Uh, it's two that printed in 2009 by Crossway. Uh, if I, like I said, right there in the review, if I had to choose one commentary in Romans, this would probably be it, hands down. Why? It's because I had read this sucker cover to cover. Um, you see it's dog-eared, it is tore up, it's frayed out, it's, I love it. Um, I highly recommend it. Read it cover to cover. It's an easy read. It's actually from his sermon notes, uh, when he preached through Romans, and so... I don't know. Um, take that reco for what it's worth. The second recommendation, the best technical commentary. Uh, what I love about this recommendation is that it, it, people from all theological convictions uh, within the Christianity realm, uh, they could be mainstream Protestants, they could be hardcore reformers, uh, all points in between, right? Uh, uh, charismatics, it doesn't matter. In, I recommendation Douglas Moo, 1996, uh, the Epistle to the Romans. Uh, the recommendation I have is the first edition. I, I haven't got my hands on the second edition. I just came out in 2020. I was real excited about it, uh, but 
Do I have $50 just to be blowing on books and stuff at willy nilly? No, I have to budget for that. So, uh, but I have my first edition. I'm good to go. There's not going to be like major, you know, updates. Like he's going to go straight heresy. Uh, Douglas Moo is, he's pretty legitimate. He was also the general editor on the NIV uh, update. 20, I want to say 2011. So he's in charge of that. So if you like, if you like, oh, I really love my NIV. And like Douglas Moo had a lot to do with that. And that technical commentary is amazing. So good chance on that. Uh, if you want a big, uh, big boy book, big girl book, it's technical. I've read it cover to cover. It's really great. Uh, very, very good. I love it. I just like it. So highest recommendations. Okay. Now. Oh, where's that? I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find all my little books here. All right. The sec, this one is, I, I don't have my jacket covers on, so you may, these may not look exactly the same, but this is a uh, Romans New Testament commentary by William Hendrickson. Uh, he was a Presbyterian pastor who passed away uh, not that long ago. Uh, I'll say like 20 years ago. Uh, he, what I love about him, the backstory on him. You probably don't know him unless you had to read one of his books in school or something. But what I love about him is that when the rest of all evangelical was buying into like your pre-trib rapture, whatever your eschatology is, it's not going to move my needle one way. I'm not going to say you're wrong or right or whatever. But there is a default mode, a default teaching in evangelicalism is that we're pre-trib, that we are going to be raptured before the tribulation hits. Uh, you see it in the um, in popular culture. You see that in popular Christian culture. Uh, but you also saw it from the pulpits. I grew up, I wasn't Christian until like maybe, uh, or not until like 15 years ago. Um, but I grew up in church and I, this was just taught like it was like, historically, that's not the case. And I'm about to get to the point. The point is, is that while every church was trying, switching over to pre-trib, this guy was like, no, that's not even it. In fact, it's it with the pre-trib eschatology comes a um you, you have to accept with pre-trib one of the one of the heresies and one of the the errors in their teaching is that with pre-trib comes in some way israel is automatically saved just by their israel right and William Hendrickson pushed back against that. And he's like, no, that's not the case, obviously. And uh, so much so, a lot of people call him anti-Semitic. Because he's like, oh, I'm not going to say Israel is going to be say, automatically saved. No, they're going to be saved by belief in Christ alone. I know, right? But here we are. Yeah. What are you going to do? Here we are. So, anyway. We're going to go check it out. Really good. like him. A uh, commentary I have on tap, I have not read cover to cover, is one from William S. Plimer, was uh, published in 93 by, uh, from Craig Girl, called Commentary on Romans. Uh, but this guy is pre-liberal Princeton Theological Seminary, back when they were really conservative and really good, and just didn't go off the rails, and so recommend it. Uh, he, he has a staple in my library, so I can I, when I go to it, it's not going to be off-kilter, you know? Uh, it's going to be off the wall. Also, another one uh, I keep in my library is from Robert Mounts. is from the uh, New American Commentary. Uh, the hardcover looks like that. If you get it with a pa uh, a jacket, it's going to be like blue in color. It's a real pretty blue. So go, go ahead and check that out. Um, oh, and uh, a really good one. Actually, this is the, now this series, bro, man. I would love to have this series, but you got to pony up the scratch, right? This is the ancient Christian commentary on scripture. This is in T, uh, New Testament volume six. The editor is Gerald Bray. I love Gerald Bray. Uh, his systematic God is love. Highest recommendation, but I'll talk about that later on. Uh, this, this like puts together all of the, um, uh, 
first century, second century, third century ancient uh, commentaries on the passages that you're studying now, one to teach now, one to get into. Uh, what did what did the first century church, what did the second and third century churches say about the same topic or same the same passage, same verse? Uh, it's really great to see the orth what is considered orthodox historical proper um, theological and doctrinal positions hold true for the last 2,000 years. Yeah, I know that's not very progressive. I know that doesn't like get us into the future and we don't have to. What I love about what I love about Christianity is that while the world is trying to get itself progressive in order to like fix some of the problems that are going on, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, and the teachings, they hold up. They will always hold up from the beginning of time. We trace our, our lineage uh, through the teachings of Paul and Peter and John through the ministry of Jesus Christ way back to Moses, back to the, the first instance of the preaching of the gospel in Genesis 3.15. Um, so, yeah. I really appreciate it. I, I don't have the entire set, so don't don't have me like I'm just balling out of control. I have one and two, and that's because I think a friend of mine gave that to me. So really appreciate it. I think that's John McClellan. So if he watches this, thank you, sir. Uh, Calvin's commentaries, yes. And you saw that I do have Calvin's commentaries, and I carry it around my olive tree. Highest recommendation. Also, last but not least, least but not last, uh, I would be remiss if we did not mention uh, Martin Luther's commentary on the Book of Romans. Uh, the one I have is translated by uh, Theodore Mueller. Um, it's it's the it was one of if not it's most is it was it the thing that started off the Protestant Reformation? No, of course not. There's there's things that were or conspiring and, and God was like reforming the church and everything like that. But was it the biggest thing? Was it the bang? Yeah, it was the explosion. Um, but he, when Martin Luther tried to wrap his mind around Romans one, um, 17, that, that changed the course of our faith or of our, our church or, uh, ecclesiology our doctrine and our theology. So you have to, I think that's uh, worth visiting there. So anyway, that's all I got. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you, and if you, I want to be full, full disclosure. If you come to my site, you're like, oh, uh, where are those books? You click on those books. Uh, it's going to open up, say like this. I want to, I'm going to buy that book. That book looks pretty cool. So if you go to, yeah, like you may get a banner or a truth for, or whatever, but if you go to, um, let's see if I can get back to it. Like if you see one that's like a Amazon link, uh, I do have an associates, Amazon associates link. So if you click on that, uh, part of the proceeds will go right back into uh, this little this little Twitch streaming. Uh, it'll go just right back into uh, making the broadcast a lot, uh, uh, a lot better. So anyway, uh, so thank you for supporting again. Uh, don't subscribe cause I don't know how all that works. And, um, Oh, you can see like it's inception. Uh, so come back, uh, again, Mondays at noon central time. I probably will start doing a follow up episode, like kind of a dual episode. Uh, depends on my lighting. Cause like if I do one in the evenings, it's kind of like, I don't have a lot of light right now. I'm using my window. Uh, but if I can get some more lighting equipment, I can do like one that's appropriate for after hours. So anyway, uh, take care. And if you have any questions, let me know later.